Hello, you're listening to the Talkie Spirit Anime Cast. My name is Andrew, and I'm joined here with Chris. Yo. And today we are doing our summer 2016 anime season preview episode. It's finally time. Dead. For all those people that think that spring just is terrible, we have stuff coming up. <laughs> you might, you may or may not like. Or you might be excited about some returning shows. You might be excited about some new offerings. Who knows? But uh, we're here to give the lowdown and run through everything and give our perspective on what information, what little information we have available to us for right now. So, uh, But yeah, we're on the otakuspirit.com website. You can go there for our news, reviews, and coverage of new and old anime, as well as our wonderful community at the forum link at the top, social media links on the right side, and all that good jazz. So do you want to get started? I, think it's time. I suppose. Let's just stop here and then go, never mind, we'll just do it next week, April Fool's. I don't think you can do April Fools on June. June Fools. Yeah, it's June Fools. It's a new <laughs> thing. We're making it. Uh, we're gonna start off with. We're gonna we're gonna go through the list. We're gonna start with uh, shows that are uh, kicking off. We're gonna go into uh, shorts. We're gonna give a little bit of O and A stuff, and then finish off with saying, "Hey, here's the the continuing shows and what shows we're most excited for." I guess we'll, we do that usually. And we always forget about it <laughs> until the last, <laughs> until the last minute. minute. That's how it works. Um, but yeah, we're going to start off with uh, 91 Days. And this one, is uh, synopsis is, the time is 1920, five years after national prohibition law took place at a city called Lor- Laurel in the United States. Uh, I've never heard of Laurel. I'm sure it's a place. <laughs> so, uh, main character, Avilo... Uh, arrives and uh, to join the Vampiro family mafia uncovered uh, mafia uncover undercover I'm sorry I, I'm, I'm already messing up in order to seek revenge of killers who killed his parents and brother in the mo- in this mafia uh, a killing starts kills a, a killing starts kills that's a sentence uh, revenge <laughs> starts new revenge. A story of re- uh, vengeance and sorrow starts now. Um, this is being done by Studio Shuka, and who did uh, Do Da Da X Two, and uh, is soon to be doing Natsumi Book of Friends season five. I'm looking at you, Neko. I don't know if he knows that already. Um, and uh, the genres are drama. I'm sure somewhere in there is mafia as well. I, I think that's a genre. Is it I crime? I guess it'd be crime. Crime would probably mm-hmm. be. Um, the interesting it, bits that I found in this is the director is Hiro Kaburaki, who did Kimi no Ni Toroke and My Little Monster and Hozoki no Raitatsu, which Chris likes Kimi ni Toroke. I like pretty much all three of those, so. <laughs> no, there you go. Uh, and the series composition is being done by Taku Kishimoto, who did Erased, uh, Silver Spoon, Haikyuu, uh, Joker Game, and Bunny Drop. So really good little pedigree that's behind this one. Uh, specifically, and it is a an original work too. So, a lot of lot of lot of promise there. Yeah, it it, it looks like it's got a lot of um, solid character development, interesting um, interesting world that they've got going on. So, yeah, I'm 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 interested in it. That's for sure. I think the main thing that jumped at me on the PV was, oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> this is being done by the same studio, studio that did uh, Do Da Da X Two because it just looks just exactly yeah. like it. Um, definitely does look dark and uh, has a pretty cool little setting there. It's something I really ever don't ever. See. I mean, you see revenge stories usually in like shonens where it's like, oh, I'm going to get you back for getting my family, and then eventually they, you know, they're friends and it'll be they interesting see each to sides. see everybody in America talk in Japanese <laughs> <laughs> or just a lot of English. The entire show is English because they they make every character speak English. Uh, that would be that'd be crazy. Or maybe they just get like a whole bunch of English actors and no, they won't. No, do that. no, they won't. <laughs> <laughs> um, our next one we have, I want to talk too much about it because it's it's returning and it's uh, Active Raid, Kido Kiyoshitsu uh, Dai Ha, which is the second season season of Active Raid, uh, being done again by studio or studio production IMS, and the genres are mecha, police, sci-fi. Uh, yeah, like this is the second season. They the first season kind of opened up. There's this world that has created new technology. These kind of little suits that they use to kind of do everything business wise and construction and some people use those for bad things and so there's this kind of group of people who use these suits to fight back at them and hacking happens and cute little vocaloid looking characters in everybody's computers and 
That's definitely so, not Miku. I said Miku Light. No, it's definitely not Miku. No, it's not Miku, though. No, no. I think she tried to dance and sing like Miku, and that was a little bit No, 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 no. It's upsetting. definitely not Miku. Wink, wink. You're exactly. supposed to say wink, 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 wink afterwards. Yeah, you, you have go. to give a phonetic wink, <laughs> wink at the end. Okay. <laughs> um, I won't be continuing with that one, uh, just to give everybody a heads up. Uh, of course, we said that when we reviewed the first season, it was just one that I kind of fought through. Well, I was so going I to I was going to wait until the end of that to kind of at the end of the cast to kind of mention that it, this season is probably the lightest season in general that we've seen in a while. And we do know that th- we have a huge backlog that a lot of people are asking us to do a lot of shows and we're probably going to be picking up on a lot of those and letting a few of these slide it's not, I mean, definitely if you guys know of something that you really want us to cover, definitely bring them up. Um, but this one is, it, it was kind of a toss up between the two of us of who was less likely to want to watch it. So, <laughs> no, yeah, it was one thing I was actually going to wait. I was actually going to do it at the beginning, but it was looking at this season, this summer season, it's like, yeah, everybody's excited because there are some heavy hitters in the season. It was almost like all the other studios are going, you know what? I'm not really thinking we're gonna go against that. We'll just yeah. we'll just chill. We'll we'll build up our catalog. We'll 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 plan things off the side here. You guys have fun duking it out against those big hitters in the season. <laughs> we're just gonna do this because there's like four heavy hitters in the season, and then there's like a whole bunch of shojo and you know question. I just see a lot of shojo is really the thing. So a lot of shojo, a lot of BL. So yeah, yeah. Um, but we'll we'll get in those as we go um, come across them. But uh, let's go into something that is a big heavy hitter for I think it's going to be least best for show us. for Chris. <laughs> I, I already I already call this one as being Chris's best of the year. So he hasn't even watched it yet, and I'm already calling it that. Uh, and that's Amama uh, Ama Ama to Inazuma, which is translated as uh, sweetness and lightning. And that one is uh, the synopsis is having lost his wife. Uh, math teacher Kohei Inuzuka is doing his best to raise his young daughter, uh, Sumogi, as a single father. He's pretty bad at cooking and doesn't have a huge appetite to begin with, but Chance brings this little fa- his little family and one of his students, uh, Kotori Iada, uh, together for homemade adventures. Uh, with those three cooks in the kitchen, it's no wonder this dinner table drama is so delicious. It, it it's adorable guys i mean once you see that that um that pv i mean you can't help but fall in love absolutely in love with her um i'm so excited about this show i can't tell you how much as i as i quoted on twitter uh that squeak in the pv is what dreams are made of yes <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah it's, it's I, just... I, i'm 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 hoping that andrew will go ahead and put a little clip in there so you guys can hear it it's just too adorable and complicated even more for andrew <laughs> uh studio working on it is tms entertainment who did kamisama kiss uh kokori san uh yamushi pedal bakuan and the genres are comedy sinin and slice of life um and what's kind of the interesting things that i found from this one is thank you japan there is a really young girl that's being of course being raised by this single father and the girl is being voiced by a young girl and so it's not a 40-year-old trying to be a squeaky little girl. Um, this is 11-year-old Seiyu Rina Indo, and she has played Hina from Barakamon, which was like the really shy girl. Yeah, she was the super shy. She like vomit whenever she got like super shy or something like that. Um, and also uh, Yukari from uh, Tabimachi Late Show, who was the little girl who went to the festival in I think like episode three. Um, but uh, hoping that she does a good job on that one. Uh, definitely rooting for her. And uh, she definitely, from the PV, has that very childish voice to her, so I'm, I'm excited. Uh, director is Taoru uh, Iwasaki, who did One Week Friends, so that got that nice little slice of life in there. Um, it is based off a six-volume manga, which is ongoing. And uh, the series composition is being done by Mitsutaka Hirota, who uh, has done nothing notable um, but has done uh, Bakamatsu Rock and Fantasy Star 2. So I do have a little bit of leeriness in this show and just the fact that there's not really any heavy hitters behind it, but based off the PV, I, I'm given hope. The second PV that they released, which was like a long PV, it was a little bit scary for me because it kind of started getting into the 
the food aspect of it. And so it's like, okay, is this just another well, let's bank on the food thing? Because technically they are doing a lot of cooking, and that's kind of seems to be part of the story. But I'm hoping it doesn't get too heavy on the, okay, well, let's cook this now, and here's a bunch of food spread, and now they're eating food, and they say, oh, my, and then they move on to the next food. And I'll, I'll, I'll keep my hopes up, though. I wouldn't worry about it too much. I'm giving a little caution in there. I'm putting a no, little bit of caution. Don't in caution <laughs> nothing. You know she's going to be adorable, and we're going to be fawning all over it. Yeah, it's like, okay, who, who cares if, if it's got crappy food CG flying all over the place? There's a cute character. And exactly. She says, and why? Follow really? her through <laughs> the depths of riding hell. I'm not like you, Chris. I can't pull that <laughs> off. I have yet to obtain that skill from you. All right, let's 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 move on to probably another one that's really exciting for especially a lot of members on our forums, um, and that is uh, Manchu. Uh, this one is, the synopsis is... Hikari Kohinita, uh, Kohinada is a cheerful 15-year-old girl who lives near the ocean, and sp- she spends much of her time diving as a result. On her first day of high school, she meets a teacher who is also like scuba diving. Uh, there's also... We say teacher. Okay, yeah. Make sure I didn't reread that. Uh, there's also a 16-year-old classmate, uh, Futaba, who is dragged along with Hikari's maelstrom uh, as soon as they meet at school. This one's being done by Studio JC staff, who did so, Little Busters, so, Wixsaw, so. Scientific Railgun, Toradora, Wrong to Pick Up Girls in Dungeon, Heavy Object, and Flying Witch last season. So it's lo- uh, it, it's Love Live, but the Scuba di- Scuba Edition. No. Yeah. Are, are, you, are you trying to do like the, the <laughs> Girls on Pounder thing and failing miserably? <laughs> uh, the genres are Fantasy and Slice of Life. Now, why this is exciting for a lot of our members on the forum is because a lot of our members it on the forum are chiming like they are, they they just they're cheerleaders for the show called Arya, uh, which the manga writer for this uh, Amanshu is actually the same person who wrote uh, Arya. So, and that is uh, Kozue Amano, and that's that's exciting. So. I, I just think it looks great. I'm 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 super excited about the characters and everything like that. So I'm I'm not too worried about it. Yeah. Um it looks very beautiful from the P V. Um so I'm hoping they keep that up. I think the only thing that I had a little misgiving from the P V is that they do a lot of that random chibi characters flying up out of nowhere and I'm like, please don't rely too much on that. I I I I'm usually not bothered by it, but whenever it's one of those shows where it's like every other scene Why is, is magic chibi characters. In this? Huh? Why is fantasy and magic? In- oh, I'm sorry. I I scrolled up. Never mind. <laughs> okay. Um, the director is uh, Kenichi. It has fantasy in it. <laughs> well, I'm I'm being written by the person that did Arya. I'm sure there's going to be a fantasy element to it. So that doesn't that doesn't shock me. Probably going to meet a, a, a an ocean god or something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, director is Kenichi Kasai, uh, who did uh, Bakuman, Kimikis, and uh, Nadame Contable. Um, but of course, and the again, the exciting thing is that the chief director uh, Junichi Satoru also worked on the Arya series, uh, Sailor Moon, and tons of others. So it's one of those things where I hope that it's more strength is given to the chief director because he's had experience with what I'm assuming people are excited for the series for being you know off of Arya. But we'll, we'll have to wait and see. I, I doubt there's going to be any problems regarding that. So it's cool stuff. Definitely, definitely exciting. Again, I'm a little scared about the weird-looking puppet characters when they're in their comedic forms. Um, but yeah, cool stuff. Cool stuff. Next one, sure. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and th- th- I guess that's the other thing. It's like there's both shojo and there's a lot of app and cross media shows coming. That was the other thing. I was trying to think of what the other thing was that there's a, the season's full of, and that's the other one is uh, app shows. Which you know how much we love app shows. Mm-hmm. Um, next one is uh, Ange uh, Vierge. Is this the one with the really, really cool looking characters? I don't. Yeah, you were saying that you would follow it for the, the, the character designs yeah. alone. Character designs And they, they blew the their entire budget thing. on the PV because I think they're probably using that on the phone app too. <laughs> so they put a little bit of money in that. Um, yeah, this the story is. And, and the storage of. Ainge Verge, the trading card game, which is what this is based off of, uh, follows what happens when Hai Ro portals suddenly appear or, or open, uh, fusing three different worlds together. As a result, various mysterious exceeds powers are awakened, 
in Teenage Girls and Academy for those so-called uh, progress girls uh, is built on this isolated Syrian island in the Pacific. This is being done by Silverlink, who I, I guess that's the one thing to give it. I think you kind of mentioned that was like, even though it is based off of a trading card game, you do have Silverlink behind it. So they do, they have done some good stuff. Uh, they did worked on uh, Chaos Dragon, Fate Collide Liner, Nan Biori, Strike the Blood, Coco Reflect. Just, just throwing it out there because I don't know how many, I, I didn't really mention it yet, but I, I have just finished K, uh, Fate Collide, uh, Prisma, Ilya, whatever. Um, one thing I will give that show is phenomenal fight scenes. And if that gets captured in this show, which it just going off of the PV can't go by the PV. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I, I think that it, I mean, it's got a lot of colors going everywhere. A lot of really cool designs. The characters are shining as far as their kind of uniqueness that's in each one of those characters. So there is this possibility that this will turn out pretty good so i am kind of actually a little hesitantly excited about it if you can possibly say that the reason why i discount the pv so much is because the way that it's played out is not playing out scenes from the show it's playing a it is an opening and it flows like an opening to an app i mean it, it goes to a conclusion it's not like there's you know cut out scenes so that's why i say that uh, but these genres are adventure fantasy magic school shonen and again, it is based off of a trading card game. So at least it got character designs. I, I, I guess it's similar to like Rage of Bahamut where we gave Rage of Bahamut that idea of, well, this looks like a, it's based off of a trading card game or a, a card game app. Can't have possibly a good. Well, yeah, it's like, and they end up doing a good job. So. It's like I, I, I was talking about the, one of the goofy games that I play on my, on my iPad. It's like the character designs and the, the card artwork is gorgeous i and in a way i would kind of i wouldn't mind watching a, a show involving that would it have a good story probably not um i think that uh, rage of the palmet was one of those things that just kind of went outside it was kind of a luck of a draw i guess in a way it 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 had great artwork which most of these games do have great artwork so the next thing is Either it has a good story or it doesn't, and Rage of the Bahamut just pulled it off, yeah. especially with Mappa. Was it? It was Mappa, right? Yeah, Rage of Bahamut was. Yeah. Um, next one we have is an exciting one for us: is Return of Arslan Senki. Uh, this one is Fusion Rambu, uh, or the the heroic legend of Arslan. Um, this is the final chapter of the Arslan Senki uh, series. So uh, a little bit shocking. <laughs> Chris is like, "Oh, this got to be a two core, isn't it?" Nope. It's actually only going to run for eight episodes. <laughs> um, so I'm not quite sure how they're going to conclude everything in eight episodes, but uh, we'll we'll have to wait and see. They've been doing a good job with the series so far. So, uh, Well, I kind of thought that they they had been pulling it out longer than I was expecting it to go anyway, so I I don't mind. Yeah. Uh, continue to be done by Linden Films, uh, who did uh, Yamana-kun and the Seven Witches, uh, Terraformers, uh, She and Her Cat, and Miss Monochrome, as amongst other ones. Um, and genres, genres are action, adventure, historical, and shonen. And, uh, yeah, again, we're going to excited for that one see how that concludes. Um, but, yeah, it essentially is the the Arslan story, so you can check that out. Um, we watched the OVA a long time ago and didn't quite get through the entire story with that one, and so it was exciting to see it come back and give it a full full series that it actually deserved. Um, next one we have is the first of many shonens, which is B Project Kido or Kodo. Uh, ambitious. The anime story revolves or story follows Subaki, who is a girl that will never show up in the rest of the show. A new hire in the A and R department of the major recording company Gandala Music. Subaki is immediately assigned to oversee the idol unit B Project, which is made up of three idol groups. Uh, Kito. Wow, they're going to kill me with names here, aren't they? Kitakore, uh, Thrive, and Moon Inns, I'm guessing because the N is capital, but it's Moons. Uh, this is Tsubaki's first job, and she gets uh, involved in various incidents and accidents as she deals with the group of young men who each have their own different personalities or archetypes. I don't know why they put personalities. Yeah, it looks like <laughs> you got a pretty boy band. You've got a... Kind of a J-Rock group and 
something in the middle. I don't know what that is. So, got a kitty type of them. Um, this is the one of those uh, cross media uh, projects is where they kind of they create the thing and then just like with uh, what Chaos Dragon was, where they create this kind of a concept. They create the characters and they kind of sprinkle it through multiple facets like apps, uh, music, uh, radio theme uh, dramas, and of course anime. So. That's what they're gonna gonna kind of do here. So being done by uh, A1 Pictures, but this is kind of the more interesting element of it. I don't really see A1 Pictures doing stuff like this and not giving it a good effort. So I guess that's the one exciting thing about it. Um, and again, if you haven't guessed already, the genres are music, probably drama as well. So we'll go with that. All right, and the next one we have is it's our Noitima block offering. Yep. Right, right, right. But it's gonna be bad. Probably. We'll get to that eventually. <laughs> uh, this one is called Battery. And this one, uh, if you guys don't know what Noitama Block means, is essentially uh, it's a block of really artistic uh, shows. And it's usually kind of kept to that. Uh, we got like uh, Terror, uh, not ter- yeah, Terror and Resonance. We got uh, Punchline. We got, uh, I'm, I'm totally blanking out here. Erased was Erased. Noitama. Yep. Um, last season was, is of course, uh, Cabinary. I mean, they, they're usually shows that just kind of stand out from the norm is really a thing. They're not always like super artistic, but they always seem to kind of stand out as pretty much not being your typical anime. And that's kind of the exciting thing for us. Uh, everything becomes F. That's another one. Perfect Insider. Um, this one is, uh, of course again, Battery. Uh, this one, the synopsis is Asano's novel, uh, revolving around, well, it's not really the synopsis, it's actually saying it's Asano's novel, uh, revolves around uh, Takumi Harada, a young man who moves to the mountain town of Okayama Prefecture during the spring break before he enters middle school due to his father's job transfer. Uh, Takumi is a picture, uh, a picture, and after uh, the move, he loses faith in his own talent he, when suddenly his classmate, Ko, Nagakura uh, appears in front of him. He's a magical boy, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding, by the way. Uh, Ko is a strong desire, has a strong desire to form a battery, quote unquote, a combination of a pitcher and uh, catcher with uh, Takami. The studio is Zero G, which I guess is like one of the only thing that I'm looking so far in this that I'm kind of a little scared about because Zero G really hasn't done anything big by themselves. They are pretty much a in-between company they are a co-op company they've never really done something themselves so um but i'm hoping that it being the noitama block they'll they'll have the budget and everything they need to kind of get this going well uh these genres are drama slice of life and sports um this is based off of a light novel six volume series that is ongoing and the director writer is uh tomomi mochizuki who has directed Rama One Half Season One, Princess Nine, Dirty Pair, House of Five Leaves, uh, Kimaguri Orange Road, and Mason Ikoku, and yes, also Pupa and some other unmentionables. <laughs> hey, House of Five Leaves was good, so and that's why I kind of started that that way because I know there's a lot of comments about uh, was, I, it, was it was, it was something did. Andrew had mentioned that somebody decided that battery was going to be bad because of pupa and that's their entire reason for it being bad was pupa and it's like it, you're you're talking about the noitamina block pupa does not go on noitamina <laughs> <laughs> well there was comments on our forums on that as well and it's like well my men said is that well look at what else he's done he he did the first season of Rama One Half and Princess Nine and 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 Kimaguri Orange Road and Mason and Akoku. I mean, that's just some really big names. And to kind of just look through a list of what he's directed and go, oh, pupa, crap, this is going to be garbage, right? Doesn't really serve him, you know, the proper credit he deserves. So just keep that in mind. He has done some really great things as well. It was something else that he did that was kind of questionable, but I totally forgot what it was, but... That's fine. We'll, we'll, we'll keep we'll keep looking at what he has done. It's good. So, um, but yeah, it, I mean the PV looks good. It, it's visually looks great. So I'm again hoping that this ends up being something that brings zero G into the fold and into something that they can create more content with. So always exciting. And of course, if you don't already know it, battery will probably most likely show up on uh, Amazon Prime. So be ready for that as well. I doubt it's going to be anywhere else. Just like the 
you know, Cabaneri. This is the Noita Mavalock that uh, Amazon now has. I'm not sure how long they have it, but we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, next one, probably a lot of people are excited about as well, is Berserker. Or not say Berserker. <laughs> Berserker. <laughs> Berserk. The 2016. Bazaka. <laughs> That'd be great. Just have an entire clip of Berserk <laughs> and just the entire time Ilya's yelling, Bazaka. <laughs> Anyways, Berserk 2016. Uh, this anime product uh, project will depict Guts in his uh, Black Swordsman appearance, which is only revealed in parts of the manga that has, goes beyond the previously animated Berserk story. And is only briefly hinted at in the first and last episode of the 1997 television anime series. So yeah, for all those people that watched Berserk like me a long time ago, got to that ending and went, so where's the next part? You'll finally get your next part. And it's going to be all in full CG because it's being done by Lydon Films and Ginba. Um, but, well, not because of it's being done by them. I think they chose to do that because they're going to have a lot of crazy sword action stuff. And that stuff does not really bod well for budgets anymore, apparently. Uh, Leighton Films has done Yamada Kun, Seven Witches, uh, Terraformers, Sheena Cat, Mr. Monochrome. Couldn't find anything on Ginba, so unfortunate. So uh, these genres are action, adventure, horror, probably lots of horror, maybe even more horror. And yes, lots of demons (laughs) and some supernatural. A lot of blood. Yes. Probably should make an entire genre just based on blood. (laughs) I'm I'm really mixed on this show. Putting aside the CG thing, I'm going to put that aside over to here because, you know, Andrew and his CG, he's kind of getting over it and he's more accepting of it. But more on the fact that I haven't watched Berserk in forever. The only thing that I remember about Berserk was how screwed up that ending was. And that's all I can remember, so I don't know if I can even go into this and still know what the hell's going on. I was almost going to plan on getting the the movie set and rewatch that. I know it's supposedly not as good as the original show, but where can you find the original show? Show me. I think it's streaming actually somewhere, so. And I, I literally. Crunchyroll. Huh? I think Crunchyroll get berserk no, the Netflix. original? Netflix. It was on Netflix or Hulu, one of those two. The movies, anyway. Yeah, I wanted to recap it, but I don't have time to get that recap. Yeah, I so. literally I literally don't remember anything involving this show. So I'm even f- worse off than Andrew is. Um, I don't even remember the ending. I And I've never... I know I've watched it. But You'll remember the ending. Everybody. Unless you block it out of your head, which I'm I sure probably you probably did. <laughs> um, but yeah, I... It might just be one of those things where I'll probably just not... I'll probably check out the first episode, and if I'm gathering everything again, or if it kind of does well to kind of recap some things, quick flashbacks or something, maybe I'll watch it through it. But if it ends up being one of those things where I'm like, eh, I don't really remember anybody, other motivations, I might just I, put it off and then hope by the end of the season I can get time to rewatch. Of course, like we said, we're going to have probably some more time, rewatch the movies or something, and then... Yeah, I think a lot it. of it is it's just a matter of... We'll just, this one is one of those, it's going to be watched. I have no doubts about that. We will be watching Berserk, but it's not top on our priority through. list right now. <laughs> Everybody's going, Chris is not going to watch Berserk. What are you talking about? Berserk is a, is, is a, is a name that you do not ignore. That's, that's like Everybody that's Evangelion. watched is going, there's one thing that happens at the end there, and that's going to definitely not Haley Kim want to watch the rest of it. <laughs> We all know what we all know what Andrew's talking about. Um, I'm pretty sure I have an idea of what what happened. I think somebody's spoiled it at, at least three or four times. So, and if not, you'll probably have it spoiled in the next couple of weeks as people start talking about <laughs> the new season coming up. Um, yeah, well, I Andrew's apparently I am apparently the the foremost authority on this one. So <laughs> I don't non- know how I, I don't know how, but apparently the guys over there at Anime Arcade have decided that I am the foremost authority on this show. Why I don't know, but well, I, I think they were just pointing out the fact that you're like the only, <laughs> the guy only person who would actually guy watch podcaster it. <laughs> in the entire history of mankind that has actually watched this and reviewed it. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I see if I can actually pull this off this time because I was probably I probably butchered it last time. <laughs> Vinan ko ko chiku boy boo love love You've got to say it. Love love. Oh, so Vinan ko ko chiku boy boo love love. No, love 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 love. <laughs> I didn't watch the show, so I, I think don't know you have to do thing. the and you have to do a wink and a, a little star has no, to come out of your no, eye. Not doing that. <laughs> not doing that. 
<laughs> this is cute. High Earth Defense Club. Love, love. Yes, they add another love on that. Tells you that it's the second season, apparently. Instead of doing two exclamation points like most shows do, they're doing a whole nother love. Teenage boys are notoriously lazy, and members of the Banan High School Earth Defense Club love, I don't know, no love on that one, uh, are no exception. Their definition of Earth Defense is bumming around all day at the local bathhouse. Uh, but when a pink wombat appears out of thin air and begs the boys to help them save the planet, even the idlest high schoolers jump into action. Watch the because magical they don't boys have any transform choice. and save the Earth <laughs> with their power of love. I am going to watch this out of pure morbid curiosity. That is it. That's what you Be- said about the first season. You watched all the way through it. That's true. But at the end of that one, I, I was so mad at it. I, I I almost have to watch this out of pure curiosity. <laughs> Everybody, this is what we call a masochist. He gets pain <laughs> from watching things that are terrible. I like the fact that the pink wombat now has one of those little... Uh, soap blockers on his head we can't get we can't get soap in his eyes he <laughs> he, he might tear not. up apparently not uh it's done been done being done by studio comet uh who did skull rumble and uh although Suzuka. i think soap in his eyes is least of his problems because blondie has some kind of weird obsession with t- tickling him school rumble and suzuka is what they've done <laughs> genres are comedy I'm sorry. Show cuddle Joe. cuddle slice of life <laughs> superpowers <laughs> and cuddling apparently I'll be I'll be skipping this one as well. And then I don't blame everybody. you. I don't blame anybody for skipping this one. It I is, couldn't... it's 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 weird. This is this is what I would call the parody magical girl, and it is making everything that is a magical girl and making fun of it in in every way, shape, or form. So that's all it is. <laughs> that's all it is. He just gave you the entire synopsis and the show right there. You don't have to worry about watching it. Next one we have is Tear Don- uh, Cheer Donshi, or Cheer Boys. This one is a story that revolves around members of a cheerleading squad at a men's university. Uh, this is being done by Studio Brains Base, who did uh, Kuranai, Penguin Drum, uh, Teen Romantic Comedy Snafu, One Week Friends, Amnesia, Bacano, and Renne. Uh, the genres are sports. It's only one, one genre. And it's based off a novel uh, being done, directed by Ai Yoshimura, who did Blue Spring Ride and Dance with Devils. And yeah, I mean, based off the, the PV that we got, <laughs> it's got to be doing some kind of rotoscope or, or motion capture because the it looks pretty good, but it's obviously not animated like, you know, standard 2D animation. It's something that looks like a CG, but it looks really good. I mean, they use different kind of coloring and whatnot to kind of hide it, but I just don't know if I'm going to enjoy a show about male cheerleading squad. I mean, it's just not really in my, I mean, even when I see the, the 50th cheer show or cheer movie that's being made in America, I always just kind of go, that doesn't look like it's for me at all. So I'm, I'm very mixed on it. I, I think it looked good. Um, and I do know that based on some of those shows that that you have mentioned up there, I did like generally all of the aesthetics and all of them. So I I'm I'm curious at best. Um, I, that cheer doesn't bother me. I, I think it's actually a very interesting quote unquote sport, if you want to call it that. <laughs> But come on, all anime is moe blob junk. Why would you have boys and not uh, an actual like American cheerleading squad kind of anime? I think that they're trying to capture a a grace with the strength, and it's. I think that a female would a female squad would probably fall too far into the moe where they can keep that with the bish uh, the bish uh, the bishonen characters. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it, it's it's I can see kind of reasons for doing it this way, but you know who knows. We all Plus, know besides that, it, they can ship the crap out of all the characters in there. And it, se- it seems like the the female audience for anime seems to be growing a lot. So I know that that's something that the anime production studios are not scoffing at anymore because it seems like the appeal for the uh, female audience seems to be growing more and more, even more than uh, the male audience. So that's I I, hey, I called it. I called it. I called it. What are you calling? That the new Moe is 
this. I don't remember calling that, <laughs> but I guess you can call anything and say that you called it. You like doing that. Next one is the one that we won't be watching also is uh, Degray, uh, Degray Man Hollow. Uh, this is uh, the long-awaited continuation of the 2016 Degray Man series. Uh, so if you watched Degray Man way back in the day, and you're one of those many people that said it gets good around 50, you can watch the rest of it now <laughs> with this continuation with Hollow. Uh, being done by Studio TMS Entertainment. Who did Kim, uh, Kami-sama kiss I, I, Kukari-san? I suddenly got a strange interest in this show. <laughs> what? The guy who who did this is the guy who did Crossing. The director, yes. The director is uh, Yoshiharu uh, Ashino, who did Crossing. That was the only notable person I could find in it, was the guy that made Crossing. And I'm going, I still don't know what I think of Crossing anymore, <laughs> but that's cool. So now I don't know what I think of Hollow now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's kind of an unfor- unfortunate the idea that you kind of requires you to watch the previous show um but it's also a great thing for those that watch the original show and they've been waiting this long to see some kind of continuation 10 years for a continuation um but uh yeah like i said unfortunately we have not watched the original show so we won't be covering this one unless there's like a huge calling for it and it's available to watch the old one so we'll see uh the next one is two more that we won't be watching <laughs> There's a lot, like I said, there's a lot of time for us to catch up on stuff, so that's great. Uh, the next two we have is uh, two series of Danganronpa 3, which are coming out. One is the end of uh, Kibo Gami Gakuen uh, Zetsubao Hin, and the other one is Mirai Hin. Uh, the first one, Zetsubao Hin, is the prequel to the 2012 PSP game Danganronpa 2 Goodbye Despair. And the uh, Mirai Hin will be a conclusion of the Hope's Peak Academy series original story. So if you are a fan of Danganronpa and you know what any of that means, there you go. You have some shows coming. Um, I th- I'm pretty sure these are probably going to be, you know, consecutive to each other. You're going to have one play and the next one play after that. I didn't actually confirm that beforehand, but I'm assuming that's how it's going to go. Uh, but it's being done by Studio Lursh, and they have done some pretty good shows. Uh, the genres are action, horror, mystery, and uh, psychological. I am checking real quick to see the answer to that question. And no, it looks like they're kind of running alongside each other because one's going to start, unless they're going to be really short, but they're running about, they're both, both starting in about 30 days. So one's starting in 29 days and one's starting in 20, 32 days. So unless one's only going to be one episode, then they'll be running alongside each other. So there you go. Kind of an odd thing, but uh, yeah, would, <laughs> unless they have two gr- two groups that's going to be doing it simultaneously, that seems like it's going to kill them. But yeah, generally, I probably I didn't really much care for Dog and Ropa. Um, I liked it on general concept. I liked its crazy, wacky, um, over the top stuff that was involved in it, but I didn't care for the mystery aspect, which is kind of its thing. So. I am not too interested in it, number one. And number two, I also do intend on playing the games at some point. And I think that this is based on... Basically, they're skipping the second um, the second story, which I've watched the first story. They're, it seems to be they're skipping the second story and going right straight into the third story. So maybe somebody can help me out and I'll decide if I should actually watch it. But as it stands right now, I'm probably not. Mm-hmm. Uh, next we have is days. The manga centers around two boys who have never meant, uh, meant to meet, uh, Sukushi Sukumoto, uh, who is no, who has no special skills, but secretly hides a passionate heart. And Jin, uh, Jin Kama, uh, Kazama, an isolated soccer genius. On a stormy night, the two meet, and that meeting creates a whirlwind in the world of high school soccer. This one's being done by Studio Mappa, which we really like, who's done Ushio and Tora, Punchline, Garo, and Rage of Bahamut. And these genres are school, shonen, and sports. And they're really, really trying to just try everything, aren't they? <laughs> it seemed yeah, like that, and that's what we were kind of excited about them about. So, Because, uh, I mean, the, the big thing that on it was the idea that they came at we we it really they really jumped on our radar with like Rage of Bahamut and then like right after that they jumped into something colorful like Punchline and then 
doing like uh, Garo's kind of style and then going into Ushio and Tora with that kind of retro bring back. And it, it just seems like they're they're not stuck in one place, and that's a really cool thing. They're not going to be stuck in Moe. They're not going to be stuck in Gritty. They're not going to be stuck in Artistic. They're kind of hitting everything. They're doing it really well. And, I mean, this one, just watching the PV, I'm already like, wow. I mean, that that's it's, – it's basically a soccer show, and it looks – really well i mean the the soccer play they're doing just in the pv alone just looks really incredible so uh it does look like there's some kind of use of cg in there but it just it it flows very well they and that that was the same with that we thought with the the previous mappa stuff it's like even when it does look like they obviously use cg with something it just matched so well they did well in blending it in so that's it's a really good sign of what they're going to do with this one so and we're not of course the biggest you know anime fans of anime podcasters of sports but this definitely looks like something i can give a shot so and it's mappa so that that makes me want to watch it even more so <laughs> maybe mappa can actually rope me into a sports show i wouldn't doubt it between noi tamina and 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 mappa you're definitely watching sports this season <laughs> <laughs> it's summer and all these sports shows are going to cult pull me in so there you go and chris already alluded to it and this is the reason probably why is Fate Collide Liner is coming back. Fate Collide Liner Prisma Ilya 3 Ray is here. This is the direct sequel to Fate Collide Liner Prisma Ilya 2 A Hearse. So, three, so are you giving up on it? Season, you, the you, fourth you, season. I, it is now officially taken over by Chris. Chris are you giving up Chris on it? Chris got caught up so I can finally pass the baton. <laughs> no, Andrew will continue to watch it, just hoping for it to return back to what was awesome in the first season. I don't think that it was all that bad, so... I was expecting that when he came out of it. It wasn't that bad. <laughs> I watched the whole thing in small screen while I played my game. No, actually, I watched it on that. No, I seen you on your tab. I'm just poking jokes. <laughs> uh, being done again by Silver Link, who did Chaos Dragon. Tanaka Kun is always listless. Uh, Nanambiori, Strike the Blood, Kokoro Connect, and his genres are action, comedy, fantasy, and magic. Um, but yeah, I can't really get into specifics of it because it is... Technically, in its fourth season, but give it a shot if you want some some fake stay night based world into magical girl where Ilya is a magical girl and there's a Neko rent Osaka at some point and then never again. Fudanshi Koko Koko Seikatsu is our next one. This one is a comedy that depicts the daily life of. Sakaguchi, a high school boy, and also a Fudanshi, or Fudanshi, uh, who loves boy love stories. Uh, Fudanshi is a wordplay on Fujoshi, literally rotten girls, the slang for women who love boy love yaoi stories. Being done by studio EMT Squared, uh, who did Kum uh, Kumamiko this season, and uh, Reni Koko. So not really much under their belt. And I didn't really see anything really specific in there the rest of their team too so it's very up in the air as to what this team's going to pull off uh, the genres are comedy school shoujo slice of life and yeah so if you want to check out the guy who likes the 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 fujoshi stories there you go i don't i'm not quite sure if i will I'm, i'll probably poke my head in there kind of see what it looks like if it's going to be a funny show but <laughs> it's, everything sure. about this one screams no for andrew <laughs> <laughs> I, I, it, it's just one of those things. It's not, it's not, I'm not bashing you. It's just, you can't stand the Fujoshi joke. You can't That's stand That's the big hang up. That's the big hang up. I mean, it's a comedy. You, it's you about did a guy not who likes like Rainy Coco. Kumamiko works for you. <laughs> just everything about this says Andrew will not like this show. Oh, run away, Andrew. <laughs> just run away. No, yeah, like I said, I I've never really cared for the Joshi joke. I it's been done to death, and it is never they never do anything interesting with it. So that's really my hang up. Every time I see a Joshi character, they do the same jokes over and over again. No matter what, even when they're in a weird world like Utawaramono was, they still use the same jokes, even when they're in that world as a typical comedy show. So if that's if that's the 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 limit to that Joshi joke, then I don't see this going anywhere. But we'll see. We'll see. Fukigen na mononoke na an is our next one. And that one is, the synopsis is, Ashia is, uh, has spent the first seven days of high school stuck in an infirmary because of a yokai attaching itself to him. 
Uh, why would he be in a school infirmary? Why wouldn't he be at the hospital? But it's okay. He's at a school for seven days because a yokai attached itself to him. Uh, he ends up asking the owner of a small tea room called the Mononokian uh, for help. This is a tale involving a very morose owner of Mononokian uh, guiding the yokai that happened to wander into the world to go to the next world. It's been done by Studio Periot Plus, uh, who has worked on Raycon, Onigiri, and Beelzebub. And the genres are comedy, shonen, and supernatural. Interesting, interesting one. I haven't, I haven't. It, I it, 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 it does look interesting. Um, I, I think it could be fun depending on how they handle the yokai um, versus uh, real world uh, connection. Right. So, so, and it looks decent. I'm not, I'm not. Okay, now I'm getting it. There's, there's literally a yokai on his back. <laughs> It's like we're on. I'm checking. I'm just watching the PV on the side here, and it's literally got this big, huge fuzz ball on his back, and he can't move around. So, uh, I guess I guess it plays off the the fact that it's going to be a, a comedy there. So, um, the director is uh, Akari, uh, Akira uh, Iwanagi uh, Iganaga, who did Corpse Party and Isuka. So that's kind of questionable. Series composition by Takoe or Takeo Yoshi. Yoshi Oka, who did Your Lie in April and Elf in Lead. So there's some interesting people working behind it. And so uh, uh, we'll have to wait and see. I'm, I'm not quite sure on it yet, though. But it can be a, it could be an interesting one in that regard. But at the same time, that whole element of storytelling has been done quite a few times. Just it's, I guess, a question to see if they could do something different with it. I mean, we we we're still have Renee on right now, which has a similar element to it, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I mean this this show very much reminds me a lot of uh Rene. So yeah, I'm 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 interested in it, but we'll see what happens. Definitely an interesting style to it, I can give it that. But yeah. uh of course we haven't really seen too much out of Periot Plus, so we'll have to we'll have to see what they can pull off. Is it is, do we know if it's a spin off of Piro or what? I think I believe so, yes. I think it's like one of their groups or something. I'm not, I'm not hundred percent on it though. So don't, don't quote me on that. Um, Honda Kun is our next one. We have, uh, this is an anime adaptation of the manga that takes place six years prior to the events of Barakaman, uh, details the life of, uh, Seishu Honda as a high school student and a very interesting life. It is in, <laughs> I doubt that. <laughs> Aren't you pegging at it? Uh, in Honda Kun, uh, Seishu Honda is admired by his peers as a calligraphy genius and given the utmost respect, but Honda-kun himself is under the mistaken impression that the difference and attention he receives from the other students is actually bullying. Uh, Honda is uh, Honda just wants to live a quiet life, uh, but but hilarity, ugh, hilarity uh, ensues uh, hilarity ensues as the one character after another challenges his pop position as a school idol. And somehow, he's going to be a school idol. There we go. And somehow comes away as a fan of all, uh, while Honda is horrified and clueless. It's being done by Studio Diamedia, uh, Diamedia who did Sky uh, Wizard Academy, Kentai Collection, Cute Hythe Earth. Hythe Earth. <laughs> I can't even talk anymore. Boy Boo Love. <laughs> Cute Hythe Earth Defense Club Love, or Boy Boo Love. Uh... Problem children come from another place. Uh, Lost Village here last season. Uh, these genres are comedy, school, and shonen. And sadly, besides the fact that this is done by the same writer who did Barakamon, I have not really found anything director and scriptwriter and whatnot that is interesting. So, yeah, I think we're both on the same page on this one. Yeah, like it's I, not Barakamon. So yeah, what? it's <laughs> it's 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 one of those things that it, we don't. I don't want to 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 drop it down, but it, it it's it's like okay, it's almost like they're going off of the idea of um, what they had with Sakamoto Kun, which we still don't know how that that show's pulling off what it's doing. But now we're we've got one of the characters who, frankly, I mean, we liked him only on a very surface level. We really liked the other characters around him and that that small town life. Just taking him, which was a character we, like I said earlier, we he we had a surface level like for him, 
and putting him into school, it, it will give it a shot just based on the kind of the writer, because it's the same writer that did Barakamon. If that writer can catch, capture what it was that um, Barakamon pulled off. Well, the, my immediate problem that comes out of it is the writer themselves. They did a re- really good job with Barakamon in the idea that it was a slice of life out in the, the sticks. It had a lot of heart to it. You had a good cast of characters. And that could be the same regard here, but this looks more like a full-on comedy. So it's like, is this writer going to do a good job making what looks like to be a full-on comedy rather than something that is more heart and more down-to-earth slice of life? Exactly. Can they Can they be that flexible is really the question. So, yeah. Holding judgments completely based off the idea that we haven't watched it yet and we'll be checking it out, but just a little hesitant on it, I guess, is the is the thing. Even though we did enjoy Barakamon. The next we have is Hatsukoi Monster. When fifteen year old uh, Kaho Nikaido uh, leaves uh, her sheltered home to start a new life in Tokyo High School dormitory, uh, the last thing she expects is to nearly get hit by a truck. Save the nick of time by handsome stranger Kaho falls head over heels for him and, after finally tracking him down, boldly confesses her feelings. Turns out that Kaho's mysterious saver, Kanade, is a son of Kaho's new landlord. The handsome and uh, the handsome object of Kaho's affection agrees to go out with her, but her newfound bliss is short-lived when it turns out that her new boyfriend is a fifth grader? Question mark. What? <laughs> <laughs> Studio Dean is working on this one. We did Fate Stay Night 2006. Oh, you know what this sounds like? Oh, what was that show? Recorder and Ronzel? Yes, exactly what it sounds like. <laughs> so the guy from Recorder and Ronzel is like this girl. <laughs> and now there's going to be a lot of question moments coming up. I like the fact that he's got like the whole P outfit on from like, you know, elementary school or something. <laughs> Studio Dean again did Fate Stay Night uh, 2006. Uh, Sakura Trick, Higurashi When They Cry, Sankare. Uh, Dead or Read or Die, uh, Fruits Basket, Konosuba, uh, Shogun Roku. So genres are comedy, romance, and school shoujo. I'm I'm on board. I'll give it a shot. This one sounds goofy. <laughs> yeah, this definitely is one of the ones that, even though I, like I said earlier, where I'm like, oh no, shoujo's all over the place. It's the only one that had the synopsis that made me go, mm, this could be either <laughs> a gym or it could be like very uncomfortable. Based off the PV, it looks like it's going to be more of the uncomfortable area, but we always like to give shows a shot, so we'll, we'll give it a shot. We'll, we'll see where it goes from there. Yeah, it was one of those. I'm, I'm sitting here listening to Andrew. I have the video playing, and I'm listening to Andrew, and I'm 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 going, man, these this this okay, it's really all about this guy, and she, and then fifth grader, the outfit that the kid or the guy is wearing t- suddenly clicked into place. <laughs> <laughs> Like I said, like blue shorts and a white shirt with his name tag on it and blue blue lining and everything. Yeah, got it. Uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Next one we have is Kono uh, Bijutsu bi, Bu Ni Wa Mundai Ga Aru. I wish I got an English title for that one. But the manga focused on an art club in a central middle school and its member, Subaru. Uh, who is a genius at drawing faces, but only wants to draw the perfect 2D wife. Colette, a rich troublemaker who never stops making mischief, and the club president who sleeps through sessions and collects sleeping aids. Collects sleeping aids. Okay, probably. Okay, I got you. Uh, Mizuki uh, is the only person in the club who wants to do art club-like activities and and constantly struggles to do so. So it's another one of those club shows where they don't actually do what the club is supposed to do. The studio is Phil, who did Lokoro, uh, So I Can't Play H, Listen to Me Girls, I'm Your Father, Outbreak Company, Kiss X Sis, Daga- Dagashi Kashi, and recently Gakko-chan. Well, I guess Dagashi Kashi and Gakko-chan was the same time, but yeah. It's based off a manga, five volumes, and is ongoing, and the director is Kei uh, Oikawa, who did Outbreak Company, so... That is one big promising thing I have there because I like to operate. It, it does look really good, and I I think that you have a 
with with the director being who he is and and having his his what we've seen come out of Outbreak Company, I think that 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 guy can definitely capture kind of heartfelt moments and. I, so I, I think that it, it, it has a lot of promise. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely interested in this one. Yep. 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 Um, next one, all the, all the fanboys are screaming because Squee. more love lives coming. <laughs> I'm actually kind of squeeing inside. So yeah, we're still getting caught up, but we're getting there. We're, we're I'm watching liking what lives. I've seen so far. So uh, you don't have to apologize for yourself. I don't know why you're apologizing for yourself. Love life. <laughs> sunshine. Sorry. I'm I'm turning into a Love Live fan. <laughs> Love Live Sunshine is coming, which is the new Love Live series uh, coming out of the original Love Live School Idol project. This is a new cast of characters. Uh, Urahashi High School uh, Girls High School, a private school in the seaside neighborhood of Uchi Ura at no- Numazu City, uh, Shizuoka Prefecture. Wow, that's a lot of names. A high school, a small high school in a quarter, uh, a corner of Suruga Bay. They're just telling you exactly where to go to find these girls. <laughs> Got some addresses here. Um, there's about, there's about uh, nine of them. You guys want these addresses? I got some phone numbers too. It is a home to nine, nineteen. Andrew, are you turning into a stalker? The Come scene, on now. The, the synopsis is a stalker. <laughs> it's telling me their sleep schedules. <laughs> um, their height, their body, their body sizes, and everything right here. It, it is home to nine teens led by second year student Chika Takami. It's uh, telling us their by dreams one of too. Their, no, seriously, big dream to become the next generation of bright, sparkling school idols. As long as we don't give, uh, as long as it, oh, it says, "quote As long as we don't give up, any dream can come true." All we have to do is now keep uh, pushing hard for fame and glory now their school idol project begins to make their dreams come true it's been done by studio sunrise who i believe did the other the other's love live so yeah more love live genres are music slice school slice of life and again it's the same uh series composer and director as or it's the same series composer as the original love live school idol project but it's going to have a different director so yeah good stuff we'll see more I was thinking it was going to be the same school and everything with, like, all the girls that were wanting to go to the school, but it's looking like there's going to be a difference there. So we'll have to wait and see. We're on, I think, episode one of the second season, and we'll be watching the movie and hopefully get that all done and reviewed before this one comes out. So exciting stuff. Um, You're looking for a trailer, I'm assuming? Yeah. For our next one. Maho Shoujo. Nadia Girls, which this one's like a really recent one. They popped up onto the charts for a listing for next season, so not much information on it. Uh, they do have a synopsis. Uraha Hanabi and Inoha, Ino, Inaho are three girls who aim to become nationally renowned characters by creating animation of themselves. They chose the Magical Girl theme to catch the attention of everyone from childhood to adults. Uh... Can they safely become popular characters in a one core's magical girl anime question mark? It's being done by Studio <laughs> Bouncy. <laughs> and uh, nothing on Studio Bouncy, so and the genres are magic. I'm I'm assuming this one's gonna pop down in the short later. So expect that. I doubt new studio that I've never heard of bouncing out of nowhere called Bouncy and then doing a magical girl and then doing I'm a on full board. show. So I I don't know what it's about. It's what it's it's. It's about girls that are <laughs> animating themselves as magical girls. I'm apparently curious. making one I, I am seriously curious about this one. I I really want to know what what what's going on. What is its story? I just told you the story. <laughs> oh, hush. Don't uh, make it. Don't make it into something complicated. I'm talking about Studio Bouncy, a new new studio. There there's so much so much. So many unknowns about it. So it, it, it would be foolish not to look into this. Yeah. Uh, next one. Since we didn't have any etchy for like the last two seasons. Maso Gakuen HXH is, this, is, is this Is this the special one? This is the special one. Yes. This is the special this is the one. the special one. Now, pay attention, everybody. I'm about <laughs> to tell you a story. <laughs> a story about Maso Gakuen HXH. Or H cross H, I guess could be it too. Uh, Hida Kizuna, 
possesses the HHG hi- Heart Hybrid Gear, or HUNG, as I call it, ability. But it is not strong enough to make him particularly important. His older sister calls him to transfer to a strategic defense school, where many of the students, many of which are large chested girls, use their HHG, or HUNG, abilities to fight invaders from another world while wearing extremely skimpy outfits. Kizuna's ability, uh, fighting ability doesn't measure up, but his sister has another plan. Best sister ever is getting the girls to have erotic experiences with Kizuna so that they will allow them to replenish their energy or power up. As big old beams flash across the screen because he's finally gotten to the special part of this video. (laughs) Now, being a protagonist of a show like this, the last sentence is very important. It looks like his new life or new school life is going to be full of embarrassment. Oh, gosh, that poor guy. Studios production IMS and the genres are action comedy. Etchy harem romance school. I, I i think that this is surpassed etchy this is pretty on the border right now <laughs> just easily based off the pv if you ran away from a uh, valkyrie drive mermaid this is exactly pretty much the same type of show this is going to be one of the ones that's going to be full-on censored and probably whatever sh- streaming service gets it and there's probably going to be an uncensored version on the late night shows that's probably not going to be over here so Hide from it if you don't want that stuff. Uh, be aware of it, and don't expect the uncensored version if you're going to be over here. Hey, I'm on board, so. This is the stuff that we don't admit to, Chris. Oh, oh, crap. Keep it on the hush-hush. I see. We'll talk about we, we have we'll to talk, talk about, about it. We'll talk about it later. We, we have to be able to talk about this important show for this season. No, Chris, the next show is the important show of the season. Oh, my gosh. I don't know what you're talking about with that. Etchy Moe junk. Uh, Mob Psycho 100. The story revolves around Mob, a boy who who will explode if his emotions ca- capacity reach 100%. This boy with psychic powers earned the nickname Mob because he does not stand out amongst other people. He keeps his psychic powers bottled up so that he can nor- live normally. The reason but he doesn't he's... stand out is because everybody's artwork is the exact same. He keeps his psychic powers bottled up so he can live normally. But if his emotion levels reaches 100, something will overwhelm his entire body. It's being done by Studio Bones. He did Space Dandy, Captain Earth, Last of Tempest, Ghost Sick, Tokyo Magnitude 8. Norgami, Blood Blockade Battlefront, Darker Than Black, FMA, Soul Eater, that studio... Genres are action comedy, shown in Supernatural. And And we're getting ready. Hold on, hold on. I was going to say, you know, this is the reason why we are fully expected to have to like this show. What? Because of the writer. Yes, the writer. This is based off of the manga Mob Psycho 100. And the writer of Mob Psycho 100 was the one that did One Punch Man. It is being done by the director of Death Billiards and Death Parade as well, who is Yuzuru Tachiwa Kawa. Now, the director it does cause pause for me you're gonna pause yeah how long is the pause long enough to go dang did, death billiards did look good okay the pv doesn't look good though <laughs> i mean it looks animated and just like just like one punch man did look animated but yeah i am not a fan of the artwork um i'm sorry if you are a super fan of that i pretty much agree with chris i think you kind of mentioned the idea that the they all look like Saitama. Yeah. And the I entire the thing, cast, every character that came up on that screen looked like Saitama. It's like the the least interesting character visually in One Punch Man was Saitama for me. And it's, so now you have an entire show full of these people with these dull looking faces. It kind of gets me a little worried. So, but yeah, like I said, it, it has that cool sketchy art with the action. And I guess that could be a, a, a cool draw to it. And I will be checking it out for that. But well, uh, hopefully it'll have more consistency in there than One Punch Dad Man did because I didn't have really much of the story. Maybe the the cool stuff that I found in One Punch Man, like that whole the the Sea King thing and all that, if that's where his storytelling is and this is more storytelling based, 
maybe I'll have something cool there for me to jump on to. So aside from my really early on critiques, oh, I take that back. I'll be checking it out. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I have to take back my words because the there is the vegetable people and there's also the 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 uh the guys who are in the the gangster looking kids they didn't look like that guy so okay okay so Important. there is care uh, ca- parts of the cast that aren't just like saitama so okay okay i have to take my words back okay that's what you get uh next one we have is nejimaki seiri Rai Rai senki tenko no alter Alda Ramen or Alderamen uh on the sky. Alderam on the sky. Uh the oh, this is gonna kill me with the names. This empire is at war with the neighboring republic of the, another empire. In the first empire, the lazy woman admiring Ikuta hates war. But due to certain circumstances, he grudgingly uh takes the high grade military officer exam. No one would have expected that this 17-year-old young man would eventually become a soldier called the Great Commander by others. Ikuta survives this world engulfed in war with his superior intellect. Being done by Studio Madhouse, uh, it's being done by St- uh, Madhouse Studios, uh, who did Parasite, Wolf Children, Summer Wars, Furukano, No Game No Life, Death Parade, many other really great shows, and One Punch Man. Uh, genres are action, adventure, and fantasy. Is based on a light novel that is eight volumes ongoing. I a little mixed on this one. I I think the PV has some interesting elements in there, but at the same time, some artistic elements in there that I'm not too much of a fan of. But uh, let me guess, the lips. Yeah, they had some puffy lips. I like the lips. I know you like the puffy lips. <laughs> even though most of the shows don't even keep to I, your puffy lips. You I like think them. I think it looks great. So I'm like way on board on this one. Yeah, interesting world. I'm definitely interested in the the kind of world they're creating. It looks almost like a mixture of fantasy and and uh, early guns military. I mean, not like... I would say like early 1900s kind of military weaponry and whatnot. So we'll we'll see what uh, what all comes of it. But definitely an interesting looking world. Um, but yeah. Anything else on that one? Move no, forward. I just... I think it's it looks great. Look fish I'm, lips. I'm absolutely... Oh, fish lips. It's not fish it's lips. fish lips. That guy has fish lips. <laughs> New game is our next one. New game, which I didn't has know that lips was a thing for me, but apparently it is. <laughs> meet Aoba Suzuka uh, Suzukaze for this. No, new show I don't want anybody to meet her. I'm gonna keep her to myself in a little box. Well, she's already got an Android out there. You can go buy that Android. Does she? Yes, she does. Oh my gosh! So you have an Android up for pre-order. <laughs> uh, new game. Meet Aoba Suzukaze, a fresh high school grade or high school graduate. Easily mistaken for a middle schooler, school, uh, middle school student who joins the game company that produces her favorite game as a 3D artist and her cute antics as she gets her way through work, through as she gets her way through work and deals with her rather wacky coworkers. There you go. Uh, being done by Studio Daga Kobo or Doga Kobo who did DJ Club, Myself, Yourself, Mikakura, School Suite, Plastic Memories, Aria, Scarlet, Ammo, AA, Luck and Logic, Three Leaves, Three Colors. Uh, the last two looked cool, visually. So, I'll give it that one. I think we got a good studio. Genres are comedy, sin, and slice of life. Uh, the screenplay is being done by Fumi Hok- Fumi Hiko Shimu, or Shimo, who did uh, Disappearance of Suzumi Haruhi and Garakoa. Uh, but that's about all I've really found for the team behind it. So we'll see how it goes. Obviously, good small companies thinking it's going to be promising because they're already making an <laughs> Android. But uh, we know we'll never see another character from that show ever made an Android of because they only do the main character. And that's it. Sadly. But yeah, we'll see how that goes. It does, the PV looks cute. Um, just interested to see what else they do with it. All right. The next one we have on our list is orange. That's it. Just orange. Everyone has regrets in life, so who wouldn't take the chance to ex- to change the past if given an opportunity? When 16-year-old Takamiya Naho receives a mysterious letter claiming to be from her 27-year-old self, her life is suddenly thrown into flux. Uh, the letter tells her that her uh, that a new transfer student by the name of Naru- Naruse 
Kakeru will be joining her class and to keep an, her eye on him. But why? Naho must decide what to make of the letter and its cryptic warning and what it means to not only for her future, but for Kakeru's as well. It's being done by studio TMS Entertainment, who did Kamisama Kiss, Kukuri-san, Yamushi Pedal, and Bakuman. Uh, the genres are drama, romance, school, shoujo. Director working on it is Hiroshi Hamasaki, who did Science Gate, Terraformers, and Blade and Soul. <laughs> Sounds... Hey, 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 all kinds of weird ideas of why... <laughs> Why do you keep an eye on him go through my head right there? And I'm like, this sounds actually kind of cool. Because <laughs> my imagination is more <laughs> than this is giving me. I don't know why. <laughs> what are we talking about? She has to keep an eye on the kid. Why? Don't know. <laughs> but there could be a lot of reasons. <laughs> could get dark. Could get dark. <laughs> could just be his future gr- boyfriend. Who knows? We're, we're going with drama, romance, school, and shoujo. So I'm going more along the lines of that's his, her boyfriend in the future or something. Spoilers. I don't know. C- couldn't be that. But, but you know, when couldn't she turns into that. a 27 year old and she's married to the guy and she finds out that he's actually a pervert and was. <laughs> just, just the letter would say, now stay you away see from the him. direction my head is going for some strange reason. Just, just stay away from him. That would be the letter. Just stay away from him. Um, didn't get much from the PV, uh, but does have an interesting little synopsis there, even though, like I said, I stay away from shoujos, but we'll, we'll see how it turns out. I mean, it doesn't look like a archetype shoujo, so that's, that's promising. I think the artwork looked good for the characters, but it is a shoujo and they tend to look good as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Um, not much to talk about here, but I did want to point out, because it is kind of comical in my own mind, is Puzzle Dragons X, which is going to be an anime adaptation of the Nintendo 3DS Puzzle Dragon game that is stupid popular. I don't know if it still is, but it was stupid popular. Uh, being done by Studio Periot, and, uh, it's just fantasy Why do you say Periot, by the way? Because I get the eye from the left and move it over to that right. right. <laughs> um, yeah, that's, uh, it's funny that that's being done. But uh, next one we have is Qualidia Code, which is the anime takes place in a world where humans are continuing to fight the war against the enemy called Unknown. All caps, Unknown. All caps, Unknown invaded several decades ago, and children entered a cold sleep to escape the invasion. When the children awoke, they found themselves with supernatural powers. The children set up defense cities in Tokyo, Kanagawa, and Chiba in order to protect the country from the cops unknown who appear through the Tokyo Bay Gate. So it's like a tower defense story. No. <laughs> no. It's it's uh narcolepsy the anime. Narcolepsy the anime. I I just 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 letting everybody know. I when I when I went through this it, I, this is the first time I'm listening to the actual synopses, but when I had went through a lot of the PVs, most of them in the lower section, because I was going from the bottom and going up, and most of them up until this point, I was like, yeah, whatever, and then going through another one, uh, okay, that that looks okay, that one looks good, but nothing had really caught my eye as as something that I was interested in watching, and... I think this one was the one, or was it the uh, Regalia one? This oh, one, this one, this one looks interesting, so I am definitely interested in it. Yeah. Um, was this the actiony one? I don't remember. <laughs> yes, this yeah. is the one. Studio is a one pictures. They did baby steps. Has a really good sound music thing going on. It had a good beat, and it was like, okay, I'm interested. Studios A1 Picture, they did Baby Steps, Sabagabu, Tokyo Ghoul, Bills Above. Uh, the genres are action, fantasy, and supernatural. I do definitely agree with Chris. The The big standout thing in the PV was definitely the music. Um, does it have some really high pe- action? It, it was reminding me of like uh, Bryn Hilder in the Darkness, that OP, but it ends up being a different uh, music artist. The music is being done by Taku uh, Iwasaki, um, who is, did Gachaman Crowd's music, Katana Gatari's music, Noragami's and uh soul eaters so i loved all the music and all those so i guess and that's pretty much where it's coming from <laughs> uh definitely a cool actiony looking pv so definitely something i'm kind of interested in 
Um, interested to see if it, it goes anywhere interesting from that point. So, um, but yeah, definitely this is, caught our eyes is yeah. basically what we're saying, which I think that's what everybody's interested in. What what's catching our eyes? Yeah. Uh, Regalia, the three sacred stars, or the twin star exorcist season two. No, that's not it. Regalia, the three star, sacred stars, twelve years ago in the country of Rimgard. A big incident left an unsolved mystery that has begun to fade from people's memories. Time passes, and sisters Yui, Yui and Rina are living peacefully in Inastria Empire. However, one day a large mecha attacks in, in, in Astria. Uh, the day marks the turning point in which the two girls get caught in a vortex of fate. Me, I'm I'm watching this video and I'm like, oh, these characters are really kind of cute. Andrew goes, yeah, you would say that. It's girls in Panzer with Max. <laughs> Pretty much, yes. Um, that's because it's being done by Actus, Studio Actus, who did pretty much the only notable thing they've done is Girls on Panzer and a bunch of hentai. Uh, the genres are mecha and sci-fi. And the, uh, like I said, the, it's an original, just like Girls on Panzer was. So that's kind of the cool thing in that, is that time. Maybe they'll do another cool hitter. Um, but other than that, the team is really kind of unknown. Got to shake to me. <laughs> um, but yeah, it did. Definitely has the feel of Girls on Panzer with the character designs. Um, I'm a little bit scared on the idea of the CG mechas battling whatnot, but they did a good job with Girls on Panzer with kind of meshing that obviously CG with the characters. So hopefully they can kind of do the same with this one. Maybe they'll pop up little white flags. Yeah, when the mechs fight each other and push. There's we don't flag. want anything to happen to the cute girls. Obviously things should have happened to those tanks and those girls, but... It was a cute show, so nobody got hurt, so it's okay. <laughs> I'll definitely keep an eye on it just because I enjoyed Girls on Panzer a lot, so we'll see if this one kind of ends up being another hit or hopefully not a miss. Uh, if you've been watching or if you've been reading manga on the Crunchyroll app, you'll probably know about Real Life. Well, Real Life is coming to an anime adaptation. The story follows uh, Kaizaki, who is a, seven, a 27 year old jobless man who fails at every job interview he had uh, after quitting his last company. Uh, his life changes after he met uh, Yoake Iryo of the Real Life Research Institute, uh, who offered him a drug that can change his appearance to a 17 year old and to become a subject of an experiment for one year. Uh, thus begins his, his life as a high school student once more. It being done by uh, Studio TMS Entertainment, who did Kamisama Kiss, Kokori-san, and Yami Wushi Pedal and Bakuman again. Uh, genres are Romance, School, Sinan, and Slice of Life. Uh, like I said earlier, it is on Crunchyroll Manga to be read. It is a five-volume web manga series, which is, I think, complete. I, I, don't, I didn't see that it was ongoing, so... Uh, this is being uh, the series composer for this is Michiko Yokote, who did Genshiken, Prison School, Reader, uh, Red Data Girl, and Shirobako. So that's a pretty big name that we've kind of seen recently from that series composer. So not too sorry about the story, but we'll we'll, we'll see how that turns out. I was excited about it until I seen the PV. Strangely enough, um, the PV. <laughs> came off i thought it was more of a serious show for some strange reason and then when i watched the pv it was like uh yeah this is comedy and i don't know i i like comedy so it should be fine but i oh. it, i was expecting something else as with every guy that is a 27 year old that becomes a 17 year old it's all about awkward getting with with school <laughs> girls again you know that's what it's all about yeah well we'll see how it goes it might, it might be interesting. We'll, we'll see. Well, it's probably one of the biggest heavy hitters coming out this season is Rewrite. Yes. So be excited. Everybody be excited. Uh, from the Visual Novel Database, because this is based off a visual novel called Rewrite. Uh, Rewrite is set in a fictional city, Kazamatsuri, uh, where tree planting and afforestation afforst uh, have uh, caused the city to become overgrown with trees and flowers in the in much the same way as this other cities are filled by buildings. However, while most of these cities appear by rich rural, ru appear to be rural, 
there are many traditional cities uh, elements, traditional city elements as well. Uh, while set in the modern setting, the city also gives off a strange sense of nostalgia. Uh, Tenoji lives here. Uh, he he's a high school student who has the ability to rewrite his own body. Uh, he can become stronger and faster at the, any time he chooses. He investigates supernatural mysteries with five girls from this school. The studio is 8-Bit, who did Infinite Stratos, Tokyo Ravens, Furtica Saya, and Comet Lucifer. Uh, the genres are drama, mystery, school, slice of life, supernatural. And uh, the notable people behind this project is the director and series composer is Motoki Tanaka, who did the Furtica Saya and Kinero, Kinero Mosaic. Uh, the music is being done by June Maida, and the uh, again, this is a key visual novel, so this is from the same company that brought us Clonade, Error, and Canon, so interesting stuff. And I'm, I'm really excited to check it out. I, I'm, I have to admit that I'm like completely going to this 100% blind. I think that's even the first time I read the synopsis for this visual novel, so um, I'm curious to see if it ends up pulling off the same... Heart destruction and tear jerking that comes with pretty much anything he related that I've watched um, or checked out visual novels for. So we'll see. We'll see if it ends up pulling off the same thing. Looks awesome. I'm I'm on board. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's I think the only kind of fear I have is I didn't like how they how the director and series composer handled Fruit of Gassiah, So I am very afraid of how he'll handle rewrite because I just don't think it's a very easy thing for somebody to direct something that is based off of, you know, something that has multiple arcs. And I'm curious to see if he can not screw up with this one like he did with Fruit of Grisaya, because I didn't, I didn't like how Fruit of Grisaya was laid out at all. So, well, hopefully this one will turn out better. Uh, but yeah, uh, next one we have is Saiki Kusui, Kusuo no uh, Saichan. And this is uh, the, the disaster of Sai Kuso Saki is the English name. Uh, the manga centers around a high school boy named Kuso Saki who uh, possesses or he possesses supernatural powers that cause unfortunate events in his everyday life. That's really all I have. <laughs> Studio JC staff, Little Busters, Wixos, Scientific Railgun, Toradora, uh, Round to Pick Up Girls in a Dungeon, Heavy Object and Flying Witch is the works they've done. Uh, the genres are shonen and supernatural and is based off of a gag manga that is 17 volumes and is ongoing. So we'll see. We'll see if that has anything in it besides the weird artwork that it has. I can't get over the weird little well, antenna things. Like just, going, just going based on, on JC stuff, I'll, I think it'll be fine, but I, I all I was able to do was find a, a some kind of a manga 2.5 or whatever so i don't know i it's it's a very big unknown right now uh sacred writer sex is it sex zex zex or crocs you know, x. turn it into something that it's cross not. x is what you're trying called. to get you're trying to get sex. crazy up in here sex what did i do with that last time i oh the the showman sample Showman. I'm not going to have another showman sample happen here. Uh, in the Atomi game, th I'm not going to read all this. It's like five paragraphs long. Which parts should I actually read? Uh, it's an Atomi game. I guess the first part is the more important part. Because, yeah, this I think this is probably going to be the entire story right here. And then it's going to be this, girl, that mess. Just like with Nora 9. It was like all the story was in the synopsis. Uh, in the Atomi game, a world of godless people was, begin was being menaced by Nightfly Onote. A mysterious alien invader from the Crimson World via the Crimson Barrier Sacred. To counter the Nightfly O Notes threat, uh, the humans established the Lag Defense Agency at the Something Island. The anti Nightfly O Note fighting unit, Sacred Rider, valiantly stood against the threat but was completely wiped off out five times. And so the sixth and latest unit, Sacred Rider, Zex, as was assembled, uh, assembled from five young men. Uh, however, at nearly the same time the SRX was formed, the Nightfly O Note invasion suddenly uh, stopped. Suddenly, yeah, that's keep going on. 
Yeah. Uh, studio is Satellite, um, who did Disappearance of Nagato Yuki-chan, Lord Marksman and Vanadis, and Log Horizon, which I guess is not really my cup of tea for uh, studio, but we'll leave it at that. Uh, genres are adventure, romance, sci-fi, and shoujo, and I did not find anything really notable from the team that's working on this, so-and-so. Yeah, unfortunate. It looks like a, a shoujo show. Getting that from the PB? No, it looks like... Action-y shoujo? It looks like his shoujo turned into a mecha, is what it looks like to me. Or uh, some kind of a, a common Rider type thing. Mm, gotcha. So, so, so basically, it's uh, it's a uh, active raid shojo. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> no, common rider is kind of like the Power Ranger type stuff. I gotcha. I gotcha. Uh, next one we have is Servamp. When a stray black cat named Kuro crosses Mahiro, uh, Mahiro's path, the high school freshman's life will never be the same again. Kuro is, in fact, no ordinary feline, but a servamp, a ser- uh, servant vampire. While Mahiro's personality, fi- uh, personal philosophy is one of uh, non-intervention, he soon becomes embroiled in an ancient, al- altogether surreal conflict between vampires and humans. It's being done by a studio brain base who did Kiranai, Penguin Drum, uh, Bacano, Rene, One Week Friends, and Snafu. And the genres are action, shoujo, supernatural, vampire. So this is another shoujo show. So anything from the PV, Chris? I, you I know, skip most strangely of the shoujos, by the way. <laughs> strangely enough, I, I I had to figure this out, and, and I don't remember how, what, I, what I ended up finding. But I... Uh, one of the characters reminded me so strongly of the Blood Lad guy... So I had to figure out how he was tied into that. And I think it had something to do with the studio or something like that. So, But nothing else from the PB? Just no. a bunch of cute guys? All the fans of Shodo are probably getting really happy right now. Um, next one we have is Shokugeki no Shoma ni no Sara or Food Wars. The second plate, the second season of Food Wars is coming. Uh, be done by Studio JC Staff. Who did Little Busters, Wick Sauce, Scientific Railgun, Toradora, Wrong to Pick Up Girls in Dungeon, Heavy Object, and Flying Witch? The genres are comedy, etchy. I, I doubt etchy. I mean, there was barely any etchy in the first I, season. I, like, the first episode was yeah, crazy. <laughs> well, it do, does it uh, occasionally. The clothes explode, but that's about all you're going to get. It was it, it, it turned into man service all over the place. I'm yeah, sorry. that's true. School and Shonen is the other genres they have on there, but yeah. Another, we, another season of, of uh, Food Wars incoming. I suspect that there's going to be a lot of people deciding that this is the show of the season, so... Hopefully they don't leave me on the really crappy ending the first season did, where you're, like, in the middle of a competition and you stop the season. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll get the complete rest of the season on this one. Um, I'm... Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm very mixed on it because the... About halfway through the first season, I was kind of getting to that point where I'm like, okay, I, I was basically skipping through all the, this is what I think of the food, and this is how the food was made. And then I would enjoy the show, and then I would get to somebody eating another piece of food, and I'd be skipping their reaction to the food, and I'd be skipping what they had in the food. So hopefully it, that dies down a little bit, but I know that's probably what people enjoy about the show, so I don't I don't want them to lose what they enjoy enjoy of it, but... We'll see. We'll see. How I the think it has. I think it has solid characters. If it brings more out of the characters, and it's it gets too bogged down in those things, in the other things, which it's what they're doing. So it's kind of natural. <laughs> yeah. Um. Next we have is Taboo Tattoo. The mon- the manga, which will uh, this will be based off of, follows Justice, nicknamed Seiji. A young man who is good at martial arts, Seiji rescues a, a homeless old man on the street one day from some thugs, and the man gives Seiji a, an object that imprints a tattoo on his palm. However, it is not an ordinary tattoo, but a special weapon that gives Seiji supernatural powers, which, such as warping space-time. Seiji then meets a female American agent named Eiji, uh, whose duty is She's to uncover... She's not American if her name is Eiji. Just, just saying. <laughs> Who has the duty to, uh, whose duty is to recover the tattoos. Seiji decides to help her 
and gets wrapped up in a cross-national conspiracy. This is done by Studio JC staff, who did Little Busters, Wick Sauce, Flying Witch, blah, blah, blah. The genres are action and adventure. It is based off of a 11-volume manga ongoing. I'm assuming that JC's got like three or four this season, because I've been naming those off when they program. do that many... <laughs> Because you always because know all, something's going to get gonna all the attention. The one that I like is going to be the one that drops. The one that they just drop all the, the budget off of. Like, yeah, yeah we're going to flux it away over here. Uh, it's based off, again, an 11-volume manga, uh, 11 volume manga that is ongoing. And the director is Takashi Watanabe, who did Bookie Pop, Phantom, uh, Heavy Object, Kino's Journey, Slayers, and Shok- uh, Shakugan no Shana. So I'm kind of excited for it for that element. I love Slayers and Shana, and Boogie Pop Phantom was great. Heavy Object we enjoyed. Kino's Journey is. I've watched ep- six episodes of it and I've really, really enjoyed it. So it's got a lot of promise just based off the team that's working on it. So I don't think it's going to drop off, <laughs> <laughs> especially with, with uh, Watsonami working on it. So we'll, we'll see. I, I'm, I'm going to jinx it. I'm going to give it a taboo. Uh, this next one I'm pretty excited for. And that is Tales of Zestaria The X, uh, which this is based off of the game Tales of Zestaria. Uh, this one, the synopsis is, Sori is a human youth who grew up amongst the seraphim, spiritual beings not visible to humans. Sori believes in the folklore that says long ago every human was able to see the seraphim. And dreams of unraveling the ancient mystery to make the world a place where people and Seraph can live together in peace. One day, Sori visits the human capital of a very for the very first time. He becomes embroiled within an incident during the uh, during of which he pulls out a holy sword embedded in a rock, and in, ends up becoming a uh, shepherd, uh, one who can cast away calamity from the world. Uh, he begins to realize that gra- the, the gravity of this, his mission and his dreams of becoming coexistent with mankind and Seraph becomes more intense. And thus the uh, shepherds embark on the journey with his companions. Uh, first reason I'm excited for this is because I like the Tales series and I kind of skipped Tales of Hysteria. Uh, second reason I'm excited for this is because it's Studio Football. This is their next project who did, uh, of course, Fate Zero. Unlimited Blade Works, Garden of Sinners, and God Eater. Um, so expect some really awesome action. So I'm wondering how much they're going to end up getting in budget for this one. They've done pretty much every Tales in recent history. Their intros are done by Footable, and they're always absolutely gorgeous. Uh, but they're, of course, short. They're a little quick intros, so they put a lot of money into them. So I'm kind of curious if, is this going to get the same amount of budget care per minute that that kind of stuff does, or if it's going to be a reasonable amount, so that's interesting to see what they end up turning out with this. Uh, the genres are action, fantasy, and magic and supernatural. So, I mean the the PV looked great, and I am interested. I haven't been able to really follow tales, even though I love tales the the ones that I've been involved in. So yeah, hmm. I'm afraid that I'm going to really really enjoy a certain character in the show. But I know I'm going to enjoy the character because I've already seen clips of her. Um, this girl with little little uh, umbrella because she's epic and i've seen the one scene i've seen the the game from her is epic and there's a really awesome figure of her that i missed out on so i had baka one last season that i was upset about that one now i'm upset about this one because there's another figure that i probably missed so yeah uh next one kind of was another recent pop-up so not too much information behind it but uh time travel shoujo mari waka uh to eitnin no kaga kaga kusha tachi this is Time Travel Shoujo is based off a 1983's book titled Jishaku to Donkey no Hatsume blah 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 Monogatari uh, by Japanese educator uh, Kiyonobu Itakura. It is a part of the Hatsume, oh my gosh, Monogatari series, which describes the story of various scientific discoveries and inventions throughout history. Uh, the 1983 book focuses on discoveries uh, related to magnetism and electricity. Um, interesting creation, I guess. <laughs> the idea of teaching through uh, kind of the story of time travel. Uh, the studio is WAO World, who has done really mostly assist jobs um, for a lot of different uh, projects. And the genre is adventure. So I'm interested. I'm, I'm interested. 
I don't think it's going to be a time travel to like Steins Gate where you're trying to fix things and you have paradoxes and stuff. I think it really is kind of a here's cool little stories about inventions and electricity and stuff like that. So that sounds cool. Um, yeah. And yeah, she looks cute. And she's got a friend that's cute. Good point, Chris. Good point. That's what's important. Um, our next shoujo show that Andrew's probably not going to watch is Suku, uh, Suki Uta, the animation, an anime adaptation of Suki Uta, a music and original drama CD series about anthropomorphized moths. I think it was moths. I think I... What? I think I Months. It. Like January, February, oh, March. Oh, I thought it was moths. That sounded cooler. Why couldn't it be moths? I guess so, because there's 12 there. That makes sense. I, my one interesting fact of this is gone, because I thought it was this moths. Is a, this is what's going to replace uh, that, that, that Pillow Boys show that we've, we've missed it for, for, what, three seasons now? I'm so mad. We've needed it. I'm so mad. I wanted anthropomorphized moths. Why did it be months? Nobody cares about January. Shut up, January. Hey. Studio Pura. There's nothing wrong with January. Studio Pura. Baby Steps, Sabagaboo. Tokyo Ghoul. So there's probably going to be lots of flesh eating. <laughs> Genres are magic and probably horror because they did Tokyo Ghoul. And the writer is Sayaka Harada, who did... Uh, the Tamayura series? Yeah, she's more aggressive and all that stuff. Yeah. Director Itsuro Kawasaki, who did Ark the Lad, Bakamatsu Rock, and Rental Magica. Yeah, a lot of these, these two didn't have a lot going on, so all I right. went with what I could find. All right. Bakamatsu Rock was all right. <laughs> I don't know nothing about the other two. So. I don't care about December either. All right, uh, that's all of our shows. Um, let's go into the ONAs. This is the only ONA that I'm really going to point out because I'm excited for it, and that's Planetarian. Uh, the original net animation is going to have Planetarian, or is, it's going to be an ONA. Um, this one is, in 30 years after the failure of space colonization program, humanity is nearly extinct. A perpetual uh, and deadly rain falls on Earth. Men known as junkers plunder goods and artifacts from the ruins of civilization. One such junker sneaks into the most dangerous of all ruins, a sarcophagus city. Uh, in the center of this dead city, he discovers a pre-war planetarian, or planetarium. And as he enters, he is greeted by Hoshino Yumemi, a companion robot. Without a single shed of doubt, she assumes her, uh, he is the first customer she has had in 30 years. She attempts to show him the stars at once, but the planetarium uh, projector is broken. Unable to make heads or tails of her conversation, he ends up agreeing to try to repair the projector. It's going to be a five-episode ONA. It's being done by a studio, David Production, who did JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Soul Eater, and Code Geass. And the genres are drama, fantasy, and sci-fi. Yes, yeah, this is another one of those uh, um, key projects, and I am really, 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 really excited for it because I've touched a little bit on on the uh, a little bit of the visual novel on the iOS, but uh, never quite get all the way through it. But what little I have. It's adorable, and I think they might do a pretty good job with it. Um, I was a little bit hesitant when I heard first heard David Productions, but I think based off the PV, it looks like they're going to do it some pretty good justice. So, I'm I'm, I'm totally excited. I I want I hope to see her story. I, I want to see her up. story so bad. <laughs> Please, somebody pick this up. Um, it is also going to be done by in a movie, which I believe is in September. Um, but this one, I believe, will be kicking off in July. Yeah, I believe so. So, yeah, excited. Um, hopefully, they do a good job with it. And I really do want to check out that entire story because I can't seem to get to that stupid. No, I hate doing it on my phone. <laughs> um, what the last that we have here is uh, shorts. We have two shorts to note, which are. Oz Mafia, the anime, will feature an original story from the game on which it is based off of, which I guess is called Oz Mafia. It's being done by creators in Pack Tokyo, who did Hakadol, Military, Ojisan, the Marshmallow, and Dunchi Guy. Well, Creators in Pack has done those. I'm not sure if exactly Creators in Pack Tokyo has done those. So, 
Uh, genres are fantasy, harem, historical, romance, shoujo. And I have not really seen really much else from it, so. And the next one we have is, and the last one we have, really, is most Show by important. Rock. The most important. The, the best for last, Show by Rock is coming back, but it's coming back as a short. <laughs> it's it's actually titled Show by Rock Short. Uh, that's sad, because I wanted I wanted more cyan and, and red theory and stuff in full length, but oh well. Metropolis City, I think this is the synopsis for the original, which is uh, it's basically a Metropolis City, uh, Midi City, a kitty girl wearing gothic lolita clothing uh, named Cyan is scouted by Maple Ar- 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 Arisugawa, the president of the music agency of a music agency. Uh, from there, she meets Choo Choo, uh, the honor student rabbit uh, girl, a net uh, geek dog named Retri, uh, and an alien sheep girl named Mao. Uh, Moa, uh, together they form the band Plasmagica and aim for the top of the world. And I'm not sure what they're really going to do with the shorts. I'm not sure if it's going to be just little quick skit comedies. I'm not even quite sure what the length is going to be on them yet. But um, I love Show by Rock for just being cute, funny, and just heartwarming. So hopefully they'll kind of be able to comp- you know compress those into shorts. So. Studio is Bones, who did Space Dandy, Captain Earth, uh, FMA, Tokyo Magic 28.0, Noragami. Uh, the genre is music. So, there you go. Yeah. Um, and all we have left is the continuing shows, which are going to be continuing from the spring into the summer, which is going to be In Ride, which is supposed to be 24 episodes, Kuromokoro, which is supposed to go 26 episodes, uh, Rinne 2, which okay. is supposed to In go Ride. 25. In Ride, we both dumped like hot. I dumped it pretty quickly. You were going with it until I told you it was going 24 episodes, and you went, really? And I said, yeah, that's why I'm dropping it. And you're like, okay. <laughs> Backwards pockets, goodbye. And Kuruma Kuro, we're not seeing for another 12 episodes. At least, yes. Well, another 14 Probably episodes. 14, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Renee 2 is going 25 episodes. I'm keeping up on it. I'm enjoying it, so. Uh, ReZero, 25 episodes. Which, so glad that we got that much. Uh, Twin Star Exorcist is going 50 episodes. Which you're dropping? I don't know. I haven't decided yet. not sure? I'm not offended by it. I'm enjoying it for the most part. Yeah, it's kind of silly and cheesy, but hey, I'm enjoying it for the most part. He's a masochist, too. And just a bizarre adventure, uh, which is the... I'm not sure what they're planning on going with that one. They can go probably 50 if they wanted to. <laughs> There's no telling what they do. It's just a, just a bizarre adventure. That's so. just printing money for them. So, yep, yep, yep. yep. Um, so, yeah, I, I guess I guess we can do what we always do where we pause it and, and I decide even put, what we're going to do. <laughs> I even pulled up a doggone notepad. <laughs> so we're going to take a quick pause and then we'll decide what we're going to have here. So let's decide. All right. What is your five there, Chris? Oh, oh I have to go first. Sure. You have like 20, so. I, yeah, I, I, but I just kind of put them on there so I can note them. Uh, Amama uh, to Inazuma, which I don't think anybody had any doubt about. Amanchu. It's sweetness, it's, it's sweetness and lightning, by the way. Yeah. Amanchu is definitely on my list. Three Ray. I had to do it. And now that I've watched the entire series, I actually did enjoy it a bit, and I'm actually kind of excited about the the new uh, new one. That's Fate Collide, uh, Liner, Prisma, Ilya, Three Way, or Three Ray. It's Three Way. It's probably going to be a Three Way on that first episode. <laughs> uh, <laughs> new game. I I thought she looked absolutely adorable, and I'm very interested in seeing what it is that they do. I did like. Um, I'm one of the few evil people that liked um, Plastic Memories, so I am kind of interested in what, what he'll do with that story. Uh, and the Alderman in the Sky or something, whatever that one was, um, I I liked the artwork in that, that PV, so I'm very interested in seeing what it what it is that they're going to do with that. Yeah, Any mentions or... Did you make any mentions? Uh, my mentions are are pretty much the same as as you were saying. Like uh, rewrite, I'm interested in it. I want to see how that one turns out. Um, and the other ones that I kind of pointed out that I'm I'm very interested in. Yeah. Um, I put rewrite on my list, and I hesitantly did that, and I'm going to say why now. 
my issue with rewrite is again i have an issue with the director and i am putting so much caution on myself because for some reason in the very far back of my head i have a feeling that show is not going to be good i don't know why i put it on my list because i'm excited to see how it turns out because it is key and key breaks my heart but i am just i am so not sure about that show and for some reason something is telling me it's not going to turn out as good as i want it to turn out but i do have it on there uh 91 days is interesting i'm interested in it because like i said before they usually don't do revenge stories and this sounds like a pretty dark show hopefully it sticks to that and it doesn't turn into something like uh the the dog day the dog show that we have right now what was it called um Bungo Stray, Bungo Stray Dogs. Dogs, yeah, where I was like, this looks dark, and then it ends up being just comedy most of the time. Um, but it looks cool. I, I like I like the premise that it has set up. Hopefully it, it delivers. Uh, Sweetness and Lightning, definitely going to jump on board on that one. That's Amama, uh, Toei Nozuma. Uh, Amanshu, I'm definitely on board as well, because I've, I I trust um, our, our community members and our friends on the Otaku Spirit forums who just love Arya, and we just haven't got around to that one yet. We're going to get there eventually. Uh, but it looks beautiful, and I'm excited for that. Uh, and I have uh, my last one I have I was kind of debating on if I was put on there or not because I am excited because it's a foodable but I'm not 100% yet on excited on what it's going to turn out to be that's the Tales of Xeria, uh, yes, Zesteria uh, the X which should be really awesome as well um, I'm also my my mentions I wanted to put Planetarium on there but apparently it, it but of course it's not going to be a full length show it's actually an ONA and it's probably not even going to be in our our scorings for that season because it's t- technically that season. So yeah, technically uh, planetarian was both of us. We, we both agreed that we're not going to put it in our list. We're just going to put it off to the side here. And yeah, technically we're both super excited. About yeah. It, technically so. of all the shows in summer planetarian is what I'm most excited about. Hands down. I am way too excited for that show. I'm excited for the movie as well. So take that. As, I just hope that somebody picks it up. Um, Days, it's MAPA, and even though I don't like soccer or sports or anything, I'm excited for it because it's MAPA, and I'm, I'm thinking they'll do something cool with that. Uh, Battery, of course, it's an Oitama Block show. I just, I don't know because it's a sports show, and I'm not sure if I'm going to enjoy it. Uh, Qual Idea, Code, just because I love the music, so I'm hoping that it ends up being a really cool action show. Orange sounds interesting to me, uh, that whole note from the future kind of thing. And Taboo Tattoo, I'm interested in as well because the director is, is awesome and I'm hoping that they pull something off cool with that. So I guess I guess it comes down to this one of those things where like that's literally my list for the season of what I'm excited for. I mean, I could probably add maybe one or two more in there, but I mean, the Girls on Panzer one I'm excited for as well, even though I'm not sure about the mecha. But like when we were talking about this where there's not really too much this season technically, it's like, yeah, it's just there's a lot of heavy hitters. I'm excited for this list of 11 shows and the rest of it's shoujo and stuff that i'm not really interested in so it's it's probably gonna be a really good opportunity this season to get caught up on stuff and get a lot of reviews knocked out so just because of that <laughs> just yeah. because of the fact that this is pretty much it this is my list right here and of course uh arson Senki, i'm excited to see what ends up being over that but that's i'm really not sure how much how much they're gonna get done with that many episodes so we'll wait and see I'm going to go yeah. back and probably look at the old Arslan so that we can do a comparative review when we do the final review. On <laughs> we said we're going to do when we first did the preview for that season, when the first season first came mm-hmm. out. <laughs> we do that with like every single time we talk about Arslan second. We're going to bring out that OVA eventually and look at that and see how that is, but we never do. It's an old DVD that I have up there that I bought like 20 years ago. Yeah. It's been like forever. Uh, I guess we can knock out some uh, our community members have been kind of chiming in on certain things. So I guess we can see uh, what they've been talking about. Uh, really just a lot of lists of a lot of things. Tori was saying, uh, I guess some of his comments on some of the stuff. He's excited for Tier Don C. He says, don't judge me. We judge you all the time, Tori. That's not, that's a given. Uh, Tori also said, fake light liner, Prisma, Ilya, three-way. I said, don't judge me. He says again. <laughs> hey, <laughs> everybody's judging, judging me, so you're covered. Yeah. Uh, Chris is apparently thinks that he's just like this shining beacon for the show. A lot of people enjoy it, so don't worry about it. Oh, I thought, I thought, I thought everybody hated it. No, Chris, nobody hates the show. Andrew just said he didn't like the constant kissing, and apparently that makes you some kind of. It wasn't that much kissing. <laughs> he's he's defending it, and there's no reason to defend it. It's okay, Chris. <laughs> you don't have to defend it. 
Uh, he's also Love Live Sunshine. Says I should probably watch the first two seasons of Love Live First or the second season of Love Live First. I don't think so, just because it's a new crew. I mean, they might have cameos, so you you might be expecting to see more of that kind of stuff. So, um, also said my sin Gakuen HXH says need my dose of ecchi harem. We haven't had it a long time. We had to have it. <laughs> Um, Tori also said real life. He heard uh, great things about the manga, which I have not heard anything about the manga. So that's that's cool to know. Um, yeah, Marty Adaragi says he's excited for he's a Monogatari part two movie that's coming out during that season. Uh, he says he's a, a Monogatari pleb. Uh, also says Danganronpa three. He loves the game series. Uh, uh, Food War says food porn. That's pretty much a given. Also says planetarium. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what it's about, but you guys made it out to seem like it's uh, sound good on the podcast. So awesome! I'm glad that we can inspire you to watch that. Um, okay, see, okay. Uh, planetarium is just the, the the. So you understand why we kind of have a big old arrow pointed at it. It's key, and yeah. key generally. If if you've watched Clanad, Air TV. I mean, it's 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 one of those groups that you just know that you're going to get some kind of a heartbreak, you know, just great story out of it. And that's, that's the only reason I'm excited why. for rewrite, even though I know yeah. nothing about that show. But just there's a different in directors and whatnot. That that's the only reason I'm kind of scared of it. So, um, let's see, Destroyer GX says just a note, uh, Larry of the, he, Larry of the Keyworks. Um, he's pointing out that the uh. Director and writers for a rewrite does not include Jun Maeda, so I guess that's important to note, even though he's doing music. Um, we also have uh, Neko says, early picks, um, only seen a few PVs, so 91 Days, Love Life, Sunshine, Mob, Psycho, 100, Real Life. He wasn't a huge fan of the manga, but he's given an anime look. Uh, Berserk, CG done well, maybe, question mark, Sweetness and Lightning, and Heroic Legend of Arslan Season 2, Crying Face. See, see, Neko. Neko says that he's he's with me on the real life. We we weren't expecting a comedy. We were expecting something important. And we have we have a time paradox now because Neko basically says I'll have to wait and listen to the preview episode. And so I'm reading the message where he says he's going to listen to this PV, preview episode, where he's going to hear his comment saying that he's going to listen to the preview episode. Don't time break paradox. my don't break time my brain. Paradox. I'm stupid. Time okay. Paradox. He's like I hate. Time animes, and now you're talking like one. <laughs> uh, Miss says, uh, point out the Arslan Senki is going to be eight episodes. Um, let's see here. I guess that's pretty much all we have. A lot of talk about uh, Berserk, and a lot of talk about uh, D. Gray Man getting caught up on those shows. So, uh, And a lot of people that are actually supporting Active Raid, so I'll also point that out. A lot of people are saying that they're going to watch Active Raid Season 2. And they they enjoy it, and they and some people are saying they're going to watch it because they enjoy hating stuff. So, <laughs> well, we'll see how it turns out in the end. But yeah, that's all we have. Yeah. Uh, but we appreciate you guys listening to us. We hope you guys enjoy this uh, this preview of the summer 2016 anime season. Um, hope that you guys are excited for some shows. Definitely leave us a comment in our article f- or forum thread for this article for this podcast episode. Let us know what you're excited about. Um, any of these ones listed, if there's anything that we missed that was need to be notable on the cast and crew, whatnot, you can let us know, let other people know through that way. Um, but we're definitely excited for what's coming up and uh, even more excited for maybe the fact that we might actually have some free time for once. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we hope you guys enjoyed and you all take care. Os.